If you are trying to lose weight and you feel like you've been going in circles with it, you know, you're just feeling lost and can't quite pinpoint exactly why it's not happening for you, then today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you three things, three things that if you start doing them today, then I promise you're gonna start seeing some results. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stasia, and if it's your first time landing on one of my videos, welcome. My channel is all about health and weight loss content following an oil-free, whole food, plant-based diet. So today's video is kind of, you know, coming about from, well, actually when I was making my lunch for today, which is a big pot of lentil soup, and I was just kind of thinking about, you know, this last month or so, some of my progress that I've made, and just really thinking on some of the things that I've really implemented that have helped me. And these three things came to my mind as probably the top three things that I do the most consistently and probably yields the biggest results. So of course, I am not stingy. I'm going to share these little secrets with you. And if I'm being quite honest, I swear if you only did these three things alone and nothing else, you're still going to see results. Okay, so just a couple of things before we jump into today's video. One being, if you are a follower of mine and you missed my last video, um, in this video, I did give my update for January, how things have been going for me. So I will have that posted in my description box below if you would like to be caught up to date and catch that update. And secondly, kind of spinning off of that video as well, for those of you who didn't see it right now, as a way to kind of celebrate my weight loss for the month of January, I have all of my weight loss recipe eBooks in including my meal plan here that I have been following since the beginning of January, all at 65% off. Yes, 65% off. I am doing this as a way to say thank you for all of you who have been supporting me and following me and cheering me on while I am doing the same for you. So that sale will be on for the next, uh, I think it's three or four days left now. I believe it's Monday is the last day. So if you haven't had a chance to grab any of my recipe weight loss eBooks, now is your chance at 65% off. So the links to those books will also be posted in my description box below. All right, so let's get into the video. So the first tip I have for you is to always aim to reduce the overall calories of your meal. Now, this is something that you can do regardless of what lifestyle you follow, what food you eat, what diet you're on. Anybody can do this. The easiest way to do this is just by mixing your lower calorie dense foods with your higher calorie dense foods. Now for today's video, just for the sake of keeping this one a little bit on the short side, I do have a video I made, I think like a month or two ago, where I went into a lot more detail and gave a lot more examples of how you can do this with everyday food. But just to mention a few from the top of my head, I'll give you a few examples. Like for instance, instead of having a massive bowl of oatmeal, you could cut those calories almost in half or, you know, even a third off by instead of having that full bowl of oatmeal, you can replace some of it with some cauliflower rice. And no, you don't even taste the cauliflower rice at all. So the good news is by doing something like that, it doesn't even compromise the taste or, you know, the pleasure that you're going to get from eating that meal. It does not affect it at all. The only thing it's affecting is reducing those calories. And speaking of cauliflower, another one that comes to mind, this is a really good hack actually for anyone who loves soup, is that if you really want a creamy soup, but you don't wanna use you know, any type of like fat to do that, a lot of times in the plant-based community, if we're wanting to have something a little bit creamy, we'll use nuts. So if you're not eating nuts or you just really wanna watch that calorie density, then the best way that you can do that is by cooking up some cauliflower on the side, blend it up in any old blender, maybe with a little bit of water, but most times you don't even need any water at all. And then just pour it in whatever soup that you're cooking. And it gives a really rich, creamy texture to the soup with almost no calories being added. So that right there is another perfect example. So instead of using cream or, you know, using any type of nuts and, you know, definitely not using any type of oil because oil is on the highest end of calorie density, then instead, you know, that's a great example of how you can still get the creamy soup without all the extra calories. And one more that I just thought of um, is sauces. So a lot of you have my 30 oil-free sauces and dressings recipe ebook, which 
For me in this lifestyle, you know, I love having a delicious sauce on my food. Um, not always, you know, sometimes I can have just the plain sweet potato with a little cinnamon and that's fine too. But generally speaking, I feel like, you know, sauces are just the cherry on top in this way of eating, especially if you're just transitioning to a plant-based diet, then it just, it really brings your food to another level. So when it comes to sauces and dressings though, if some are on, you know, the higher calorie dense sides, like for example, if there's nuts being um, included in the recipe or avocados, then a way to reduce that overall calorie density would just be to add a little bit of water. So you can thin out your sauces and still, you know, have the same flavor, but you're just not having a nice thick dressing or sauce. This particularly works well when you're like, marinating you know some vegetables that you're going to roast or you know if you're having a salad then you can just thin out that dressing and it makes really no difference at all well I should clarify it makes no difference to the taste but it makes a big difference to the overall calorie density of that meal and one of the sauces that comes to mind is that my favorite right now is still my buffalo sauce um, which does have tahini in it so that is another high calorie dense food so sometimes I'll have it you know, a little bit on the thicker side if I feel like it. And if, you know, I haven't had a lot of plant-based fats that day, then it's not something I really stress about. But if I am trying to really cut the calorie density, maybe I've already had a little bit of nuts that day or avocado or something like that, then that's one that comes to mind that I will thin that one out, especially if I'm just drizzling it on, you know, potatoes or some veggies I'm going to roast or something, then it works out perfectly. So I can still get the flavor without all the extra calories. So those are just a few examples from the top of my head, but I promise you there are so, so many ways to reduce the calorie density and you can basically do it with any meal. One of the absolute easiest ways to do that is just by using non-starchy veggies. You can either you know, mix them right in the meal or going on to my next tip, you can eat them before your meal. All right, so that brings us naturally into tip number two, and that is to eat more vegetables and specifically eat them before your meal. So for those of you who have been following me, you know that this is something that I scream from the mountaintops and something that I have personally been doing. And that is, you know, kind of the basis of my meal plan um, that I've been following is to just really up those non-starchy veggies and more specifically before the meal. And the reason I say do them before the meal which is another way of saying preloading before a meal, is because you're going to fill yourself up about halfway on non-starchy vegetables that, you know, really don't count for anything when we're talking calorie-wise. You can have a pound of vegetables for only 100 calories. Like, it's really quite remarkable. And then you move on to your starchy meal, which would be your potatoes or rice or beans. But again, no matter what lifestyle you follow, no matter what diet you follow, you can still use this little hack and it's going to work all the same. It's just about reducing that overall calorie density. To give you an example of why this would be effective would be, you know, envision yourself when you're really hungry, say it's dinner time, you haven't eaten in a few hours, you're just getting home from work, you're starving, and you sit down to a plate of something that, you know, is a little bit higher calorie density. And again, we're not talking about health, you know, because you can still be eating healthy, but the foods can still be dense. Nuts are healthy for you, but they are super high in calories. Avocado is healthy for you, but it's super high in calories. So, you know, you could be sitting down to a beautiful meal, really, really healthy if we're talking from a nutritional standpoint, but not that great for weight loss when it comes to the calorie density of the meal. So what's going to happen is when you're that starving, you know, that hungry, you're going to be scarfing this meal down and, you know, filling up on all these calories from this higher calorie dense meal. However, if we change that scenario and you started by eating, you know, a bowl of soup or a big salad or some roasted veggies, you know, you're going to take that hunger edge off a little bit before getting to that higher calorie dense meal. So what ends up happening is, is that that overall calorie density of the entire meal ends up being significantly lowered if you started that meal off by filling up on some non-starchy vegetables until you're maybe, you know, for me, I try to aim for what I feel like halfway full. I mean, there's no way to say that for sure, but just until I've kind of taken that edge off where I'm no longer ravenous, I'm not starving anymore, you know, I'm a little bit I'm more comfortable, then I can move on to the starches and that's what fills me up and keeps me full for hours to come. So it's really important to make sure that you start off before your meal, especially on those meals that you're really hungry 
angry, or if you're someone who doesn't feel like they quite have the control there yet in knowing when to stop, if you've kind of, you know, if you're disconnected with your hunger cues, then that's even more of a reason to start with something on the lower calorie dense side before diving into your main meal. And I will say that one of the best things that you can preload with is actually soup. And there have been studies done proving this to be true. Soup is fantastic. And the number one reason for that, even over a salad, is because of that water content. So because it's filled with lots of water, you're gonna have a mixture from not only the non-starchy vegetables, but the water is also going to make you full. It's going to hydrate you. It's just a beautiful marriage of a bunch of different things. So um, the soup is definitely one of the best things that you can preload with. And one pro tip that I wanna share with you when it comes to soup is that if you have, for example, I made my lentil soup today. So if I wanted to preload with a lentil soup, which is technically, you know, a starchy soup. And when we preload, we want to aim for non-starchy vegetables. So what do you do in that situation? I mean, you're not probably going to whip up a whole new soup if you already have one in the fridge. So what you can do with that is just add more water, just like going back to the sauces. So you can dilute the soup with a little bit more water. So again, you're cutting the overall caloric density of that bowl of soup by just, you know, filling half of it with some water and the other half with the starchy soup. And then it works just as fine as a preloading soup. Now, again, that's specifically for preloading. That's not a suggestion for if you're wanting to have the bowl of soup as your meal, then just eat, eat the darn soup as it is. I'm just specifically referring to if you wanted to preload with something a little lighter before your main meal. All right, everyone, so I'm going to wrap up the video here. Those are my top three pieces of advice that I can offer today, you know, to help any of you who are really struggling to lose the weight. I promise, just try to implement these things and you are going to see some kind of difference. And hey, let me know in the comments if you are already doing any of these things or even if you have other suggestions in mind that you wouldn't mind sharing because I'm not the only one that reads the comments. So, you know, it's just a great way for everyone to help each other. So let me know in the comments what you guys are doing. I will look forward to reading them. And don't forget, those books are still on sale for 65% off. So the link is in the description box below. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. We will see you in the next one.